Garnett, Vince Russo, they still beefing, even though they're in their fifties. Shit, I gotta look up on the interwebs on how old are these people? I swear they they been they bickering and hammering like two little girls. It's hammering the word. I don't know. So I'm googling Vince Russo. I'm yeah, Vince Russo and Jim Cornette, that fucker from Louisville, Kentucky. So. Hey, oh, I'm a big fan of his podcast, man. Um, the Jim Cornette Experience. He he's on YouTube. That's more easier to assist to um look for his uh, podcast on YouTube. The Jim Cornette Experience or whatever. The Jim Cornette Podcast, whatever. I say whatever a lot. How how you spell Cornette? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh shit. Okay, so these two individuals, I think Jim is older. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Let me wipe my glasses. Fogging up in this bitch. Anyway, okay. So Jim Cornette, I have to. This is a Jim Cornette, Vince Russo, ordeal here. All right, both can't stand. Well, said Jim Russo kind of forgave him because he's Christian. You know, he was like he he has no um, motivation to hate on Jim Cornette. He's getting older. He's moved on. Jim Cornette, he's stubborn as fuck. He still don't care. <laughs> he still don't. He hate the guy. Anyway, Jim Cornette is 59. Jim Root. Jim. Vince Russo. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> he's, ooh. Vince Russo is older. Oh, about one year, though. But still, they stay the same fucking age. Anyway, um, both these cats right here, both these men, has influenced the world of wrestling just by being there. Jim Cornette's more old school. He's been with the greats, the NWA, all that shit. Um, he's more, he, he loves the old school style where he wish it would come back, but it's not because, you know, we got these new fans coming around, you know, um, they want the high flying high spots, bumps everywhere, false finishes, whatever. All right. Vince Russo comes from that entertainment field where everything has to be spontaneous and goofy and silly for, without any uh, purpose. <laughs> but it was entertaining in the Attitude Era. Now, let me tell you about the Attitude Era. Vince Russo was the brains behind the Attitude Era. Rilth, but mind you, Rilth Vince McMahon as a, uh, a filter. <laughs> he had the filter. He... he Vince McMahon told him when he was working in WWE, Vince told Vince Russo what to use, uh, who to use, or what to create or what he can't create. You know, he had a filter in WWE. When he went to WCW, full board, excuse me, (laughs) Vince Russo, boss to all, goofy, silly, didn't make sense. He had shit hanging from a pole. Uh, These two reps. I swear, there's no lie. They, he he made a match. He booked a match. He was Booker and a writer, I think. Anyway, he was both things in WCW. He had a match with two people in the ring. I think it was Buff Bagrell or somebody. I think it was Buff Bagrell and Scott Steiner or some shit in old WCW back in the early 2000s. It was like two men wrestling in the ring, and something was on the pole, and whoever grabbed the stuff on the pole ran the match. It was some silly like Jared Tall on a pole match or some shit. It was goofy as hell. You know, time went by, people, the the heads of WCW didn't like Vince Russo's shit. Vince Russo had a temper tantrum and quit. <laughs> so, it is what it is, people. Um, Vince, Vince had that Thinking outside the box mentality, you know, just to get ratings and, and you know, and stuff like that. V- Jim Russo, Jim, fuck, <laughs> Jim Cornette, <laughs> like, whatever works for years is still working. Why would you change it? You know, he, he's a, he can't teach an old dog new tricks. If something is working and it's still working and it's successful, why change it? K- keep it old school. Keep it believable. Keep it where the two wrestlers um, 
can solidify themselves as being convincing that the crowd is like, oh, shit, this is a good wrestling match. A good wrestling match. Good storylines tied in. You you know the um the out well you don't the outcome of the match made sense, whatever. That's Jim Cornette. All right. Vince Russo's like Howard Stern and Jerry Springer. You know, look on YouTube of the Attitude Era. That was all Vince Russo right there. That, now me and my teenage mind, that was kind of cool, you know, because he he modeled the product to entice us young teenagers and college students. And it worked. And it beat WCW's ass. Vince is still on that. uh, Jim Cornette is still on that lip thing where old school was better and and it is really. You know, a lot of that shit, his rants on his podcast, it do be making sense. But would it work on a younger crowd? It'll work on us, the older people, like <laughs> the older millennials, you know, the 80s babies, a little bit for the 90s babies, but mainly the 80s babies or the 70s babies that, you know, grew up with wrestling, that was wrestling instead of sports entertainment. But the thing is with uh, Vince Russo and Jim Cornette, it was a class of two different styles. That's all it was. Vince Russo was like, come up with some shit. Jim Cornette be like, what? That ain't going to work. That's too fucking goofy. Shut the fuck up, Vince. R- Russo, not McMahon. He, I don't think he... I think he would try to get himself fired to get, a, get... Just to get him away from Vince Russo and Vince McMahon because when he was in WWE and he said to himself, I was miserable in Stanford, Connecticut. <laughs> you know, he, he's fucking Ben's eating Wendy's and shit, making himself fat because he, he was... He was frustrated. He he was frustrated eating. Do, do that make sense? I'm not sure. Anyway, um, <laughs> so it's like two different styles. Um, I kind of see why Jim Cornette hates Vince Russo. I mean, good, good lord, they had a um, episode of Dark Side of the Ring with the brawl. I think that was season two, and I was like, he only coined that event in Vince Man's ear because he didn't like JBL because they you know JBL back then was a little prick asshole thinking that he can knock out anybody and Vince Russo was like oh really oh really okay let me let me let me go in Vince's office and say hey let's put on a suit boxing mixed martial arts deal where they fight each other for real <laughs> It was, that was a bad idea. You know how much money they lost from Brawl for All, from injured wrestlers, especially Dr. Death. That motherfucker, he was a beast. But Bart Gunn was like, his rage. <laughs> hey, bro, I was like, uh, you ain't going to knock out Dr. Death. And then Bart Gunn was like, oh, really? I'm going to knock that. I'm going to knock out your bitch. <laughs> And he knocked him out. He had, Bart Gunn got heat. But anyway, yeah, that was the brainchild of Vince Russo. And, and the thing with Jim Cornette, he, he never forgets bullshit. He never forgets the bullshit. And he still was mad at uh, Vince Russo. You know, I I, I, I watched um, Vince Russo's podcast on Twitch. And um, I kind of listen in on his side of the story for the brawl fall or sis or sis talking about Jim Cornette um in general. You know like at the same time he's like I don't know why he's still mad at me. It was like twenty years ago. How why can't he move on? I'm getting older. I I have zero fucks about Jim Cornette. <laughs> Jim Cornette he's stubborn. He's old He's, he's the normal boomer. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. You, you know, he's just, he's like, now nah, fuck Vince Russo. He has single-handedly murdered the wrestling business. You know, you come from that old school background where everything has to be athletic. Every storyline has to make sense with the beginning, the climax, and the conclusion. You know, everything has to tie in together. You bring somebody in, and it must make sense. You know what I'm saying? 
where you got Vince Russo style of wrestling. It's more sports entertainment. It's more spontaneous and goofy and scandalous and um, shock value. He was the first ever shock jock of wrestling. And that's that's the whole deal with Vince Russo and Jim Cornette, man. It, it, it was like two different styles that classed, you know. But I kind of like Jim Cornette, really. Because, you know, I as I said before, I watch, uh, watch, well, I watch and listen to his podcast a hundred times. And the, the, his whole dynamic of thought is centered around pro wrestling. It do make sense in his mind. You know, I want the storylines to make sense. I want every spot in that ring of these two wrestlers in that very ring has to have a purpose. Tell a story in the ring. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's all I want, really. And I agree with Jim Cornette. Now, I'm getting older. I don't agree with the stuff that Vince Russo did, but it worked, you know, during the Attitude Era. It worked. I don't agree with it now. I'm like, that didn't make sense. What the hell is that? <laughs> but, you know, Vince Russo is, um, he, he's okay. You know, he followed me on Twitter. I'm like, oh, Vince Russo, he, he, he don't even know me. He, I think he's just following me because I'm a fan or I follow him back. Or I mean, he, he fo- I follow him, then he followed me. It was like follow for follow or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he's on Twitter, the Vince Russo or whatever. Um, man. And, you know, and it is what it is. Two styles class. He made... Vince made Jim's life a, a living hell. I mean, I'm not going to get into detail of what kind of you know, tribulations them two had because they it's all over YouTube. And mainly, Jim Cornette actually says it himself that, yeah, he made my life a living hell. If he dies, I'm going to go and rail my ass to his grave and piss on it. <laughs> piss on his grave and burn his head stone some shit I'm like damn yo shit anyway I like two of them I like Jim Cornette more now since I'm older but I like Vince Russo also you know a lot of, a lot of his ideals were um but I'm not gonna say good but it was they was catchy <laughs> they was catchy with Vince McMahon's filtering it was catchy. It, it, it was made for TV. It, it, it was very fun for me to watch it. I was like this 16-year-old kid. You know, you, you, you can assume anything. I'll laugh at it. <laughs> so, um, oh, man. And, and you know what? I don't think he... Jim Cornette don't need to work for any wrestling companies. I think he's I think he's pretty good since doing his own thing with his podcast. He's getting advertised revenue. That's paying his salary. I think he's good right now, unless he makes a, uh, a an appearance on the the WWE Network. Oh, shit. <laughs> there ain't no WWE Network. It's all on Peacock now. He probably go back on Table for Three, whatever. That was very good, that episode Table for Three. It was him... Eric Bessoff and I think Mick Foley. I'm not. I gotta watch that again. It, yeah, he, he he was on that show on the WWE Network. Table for three it was one of my favorite shows on the network of WWE. It was very cool. Anyway, yeah. Um, the thing that he got fired from NWA um, Power about the bucket of chicken is I don't know on a motor scooter um, on a motor scooter from Africa or some shit. I don't, I don't understand why people was mad at him because <laughs> it did sound racist, but he was he, he the whole time he was talking about that white dude. He was he, he was he said that comic that was for that white dude, um, Trevor Murdoch, I think that's his name. But he he he, he had a new name and where he was wrestling in NWA, but it was the same person. Yeah. He, he, it, that was for the white dude that was wrestling. We, you know, it would be fucked up if that person was black, though, but that person was white, so I wasn't really mad at him. But there's also some funny fucking SJW fuckers that got, 
it's so sensitive. Like, that's racist. He needs to be fired. That's racist. But he was talking to that white. That one comment. Oh, hold on. Let me, let me hold on. Let me, let's go and Google that shit. Um, Jim Cornette racist comment. <laughs> it wasn't really racist on NWA Power. Okay. Oh, see, I forgot the word comment. God damn, comment. Okay. Okay, I, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, if they had it on here, I don't think all this. Uh, this is no way of speaking. Blah 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 blah. I don't see it. Hold on. The only man that can strap a, 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 some fried chicken on his back and ride on a motor scooter in Ethiopia. <laughs> that was funny as shit. That was, but yeah, that he he was talking towards Trevor Murdoch. Oh my! Like, what the? F- hey, he's white. What the? F- hey, racist. Oh man. That's set. That's silly. I don't know. Shit, I, I wasn't. I wasn't mad about that shit. I'm black. Shit, I have, I got better. I have bigger things to worry about than what Jim Cornette says. Uh, these other lame ass motherfuckers is just, just fucking sensitive. You think everything is racist? That shit wasn't racist because it was directed towards a white guy. Anyway, <laughs> that's it of this little bonus episode, man. Follow me on um um Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor here. My Twitter is at Dre James, D R A Y J A Y M E S, Dre James. Follow me on Twitter, and um, you can follow me there. Um, I'm not very um, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not on there too much. Shit, fuck it. <laughs> but I'm there. I'm there. I, I'll post sometimes. Anyway, yeah, like, share, rate this podcast, review it, share it, whatever, and I'll be back again um, soon. <laughs> Peace out.